Hello, hello. My name is Dev Toria, and I am going to do a Godot 4 tutorial about light occlusion, specifically enemy occlusion using lights, similar to how it's done in Among Us. This is going to be a very bare bones tutorial, like it's going to have just the most basic things that you need to get this to work. Firstly, we're going to need a node 2D just to hold everything in it. Uh, we're going to need a sprite for the player. We're going to need a sprite for the enemy. <laughs> uh, we're going to need a canvas modulate. And we'll need a sprite for the background. Just going to rename these to make it easier to tell them apart. And background. So for the player, we'll use the Godot icon. For the enemy, we'll use the <laughs> we'll use an icon that I made, <laughs> and for the background, we'll use an Among Us background. So, firstly, I'm going to add a script to our player just to make it a little easier to show the light. I'm going to make it so that the player sprite will follow the mouse position. This is just for prototyping purposes. Uh, you could do it any other way, but this, uh, this is just the quick way of how I'm going to do it. Save, uh, save the scene, set the main scene as node 2D, and ta-da! The player sprite now follows the mouse. We now need a point light 2D to put onto the player. I like to use a gradient texture 2D for prototyping just because I can set it to be a circle and I don't have to worry about making a texture in like Photoshop or something. So we swap these around and we set the alpha to be zero so that it's completely clear. Uh, and now we have a circle light. Uh, for prototyping, I like to set it to be just like a solid circle. Um, it does have issues where you'll have this very ugly looking edge. But again, this is just for prototyping. Uh, we can reset the position to put it center the player. And yeah, now we have our light. Next, we can set the canvas modulate to be gray. Uh, you can set it to black and that will make all the shadows black, but uh, Among Us has it see-through so you can still see the backgrounds, uh, which is why we set it to gray instead. You can set it to like be as light or as dark as you want. Now with the enemy, we'll set, we'll, we'll go to visibility and we'll set his light mask to two and his visibility layer to two as well. This is because everything is already default to be layer one and we want specifically the enemies to disappear in the shadows. So we'll set these to two. Uh, the next important step is to go to material and make a new canvas item material. In here, leave the blend mode to mix but set the light mode to light only. And he should have disappeared because now he'll only appear in the light. The next step we have to do is to make it so that the light will affect him. So we go back to our point light and we go down to range. Here we set the item color mask to two. For what I understand, it is culling the enemies material. 
Uh, it's coloring this material so that it will be affected by the light because currently this material is what's hiding it. And here it is. Uh, this also works in play mode. Hello. Mwah. Now, I'm not going to just leave it there because obviously in Among Us, they have dynamic shadows. And the way to do that is one, <laughs> to turn on shadows. But currently it's not going to be affecting anything because we don't have any uh, light occluders. So what we will do is create a light occluder. Give it a polygon 2D. And now we can click anywhere and create polygons. Ta-da! You now have shadow, well, dynamic shadows. Uh, you'll notice that the light occluder has darkened this area specifically. See, uh, so you compare it to the shadow of just the canvas modulate compared to the light occluder shadow, and it's noticeably darker. The way to fix this is to go to visibility, go to modulate, and set this the, and set the alpha to zero. <laughs> it is still technically including light, it's still technically making the light go around it, it's just we can't see the occluder anymore. Um, you can also turn on the grid from here to make your polygon points more exact instead of the loosey-goosey way that I did it. But maybe you're making a tile-based game you won't want to be adding multiple light occluders to the scene because obviously you have a lot of tiles, but you can add light occluders to tiles. So here we make a new tile set and we click the tile set and we go down to rendering. And from here we can add an occlusion layer. Now we go down to the bottom of the screen and click tile set once again, but the, a different tile set. <laughs> And we add a uh, the icon for now. You can use um, an actual tile set, uh, but we add it so we can create a tile set. Now we go to paint, and here we can paint on our occlusion layer. Now, right now it's set to cover all of it, but you can uh, change it however you want. Now with this selected, you can paint your icon, you can paint your tile set. And now it is covered in an occlusion layer. So we grab one of these and ta-da. you can now just very quickly and easily add dynamic shadow light occlusion <laughs> to your tile-based game, to your tile map. Now you might have noticed that the player is very washed out. Uh, he's much brighter than his initial icon is. That is because the point light is set to add and as default, and it's adding light to what's currently there. Uh, a way I found to fix this is to set it to mix so that it goes back to the sprite's original color as well as the backgrounds. Um, you can line it up again, but that gives you the same problem. So this is the color of the background originally. So now you're just getting 
the light. So yeah, I hope I was able to help, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, see you next time!